right? So, you know, the, the real tight clusters, like in a, in a high school graph, the tight clusters were called cliques, right? You had a clique of friends, right? Or a clique of friends, um, as, as I learned um, is the, is the, is the bottom we go this afternoon. Um, so, 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 so how would you, uh, um, so first off, does it make sense to, to look for these, these cliques in these, in these really large graphs? No? Why not? Okay, let's not worry about the computational thing, but um, um, that's, so, so, so finding, um, so clique, you know, if it's, if it's uh, a problem which might be in P or NP, you always write it in, uh, um, write the problem in all capital letters. It's one of the rules, I think. Um, so the clique problem is one of the famous um, NPR problems. So determine if there is a clique of size K, um, size K or larger. And this is, and so if it's in NP, this would take exponential in the size of K, uh, would be the, the right time would need to be exponential if, if P is not equal to NP. Um, so, so, um, so finding cliques is, is NP hard. Okay, so that's true in general, yes. Um, so, but uh, um, from a modeling point of view, is, is finding cliques important in Facebook? Well, yeah, it's important, but it's not you can use our trick, it's like Facebook stores number of mutual friends for each node or each person. So you can see the total number of friends we have, and if the number of mutual friends is greater than two thirds of the total friends, uh, then you can qualify it or something like that. Right, so, um, okay, so you might, Facebook may have pre-computed something that's gonna help you. Um, so, so, so what's the, so, so, um, so what's, do you think, the largest clique of friends that you are part of? Well, I have less than 200 friends, and I think the largest mutual I saw was like 90 friends in mutual between me and one other person. So you, but, do, do you think that there's a clique of 90 people, or do you think? Yeah. Do you, do you think all of those people are friends with each other? I think yes, that 90, all of them are friends with all the other 90 people. So, but if only one person is, is not friends, then, you know, if, if one pair of people, you know, maybe these are friends from your high school, yeah. and two people decide, I hate each other, I don't, I don't want to friend this person, right? Yeah. Then, then, it's, then the clique is smaller. Yeah. Right? So, so you have to have all of these people join part to actually be able to Yeah, but this is like an approximate solution, because that original one can be hard. Right, well, so, so the clique is, is all vertices, right? Yeah. It's all, all pairs of vertices at an edge. So, so you know, um, uh, missing a few, you know, edges, um, not uh, So you can have, on a really large graph, if you thought you had a big clique, you could miss, say, um, you could have like 95% of the edges and it being very far from the clique. So, so if you missed a few edges, it would not be a clique anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and also, when you look at these, these groups, these larger groups, you know, um, most cliques um, are usually small. Um, most of them are small. There are some big, there are some big cliques on there. Um, maybe even 100 is, uh, you know, is small compared to all of, all of Facebook. Um, so, so most cliques are actually pretty small. So, um, so this is kind of a modeling problem. This maybe is not so bad, but when when you look at these large clusters of these like graphs on Facebook or on like data from Netflix or something, these clusters tend to be much larger in scale than the clique. Um, so, so, so the clique is a very stringent requirement. But because most of them are small, there actually are you know. Um, 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 there are good um, heuristic um, algorithms, right? So this is these algorithms are not gonna. If you set up kind of a worst case possibility to, to do your NP hardness proof, um, these algorithms would still fail, 
right? But there are good algorithms that work well in practice. And they work kind of like uh, um, this a priori algorithm we talked about for finding the frequent item sets. Um, what you do is you, maybe what you do is you start with, uh, with, with peop um, people who are connected by, have, have, a, have a lot of mutual friends. Right, or you think that you find, um, find all, you know, pairs. You start with all edges, um, and then the next step is you look for triangles. So the, the, the triangles are important for a variety of reasons here. So you look for all triangles, and maybe Facebook has already stored and pre-computed all the triangles in the graph. Um, usually, um, the number of edges is about the same, or you know, as the number of triangles. You can have n choose three potential different triangles, but typically it's even more rare than the edges. Um, so storing, if you could store all pairs, you can maybe store all triangles. Um, um, and then after this, you find all. Um, four cliques. So, so every large clique that's larger than a three clique, like any, any ten clique, all of the triples of vertices must be triangles that are inside of it. So if there are ten vertices in a clique, all sets of three of them must be triangles. So if you have things that are not in a triangle, you can already throw them out. Right? Once you have all the triangles, you can then look for all the four cliques. So you look for, you, you take a triangle, and you look at all of um, all of the, the edges coming out of the triangle, and you see if it matches. You only need to check if that, that, if that person is also a friend with everyone else in the triangle. So once you do this, you can find the four cliques. And because there weren't too many triangles, this didn't take too long. Most people don't have more than, say, 200 or 500 friends, right? So you, can, um, so you don't have to. This won't take too long to find all the four cliques. And the number of four cliques is often much less than the number of three cliques. And so you can keep doing this and keep building on the existing cliques you have. Um, and so, um, and so the, the, if, you, if you keep, um, so if you keep iterating down until you can't find any more, this is actually pretty, uh, this R is actually pretty feasible. So, so this, this, uh, this is something you can actually run. I, had, I, think, I think it was students in this class last year, some of them actually went and and took some large graph and, and implement one of these algorithms and found a bunch of, found all the cliques up to something like this. And you know, it, it, was, it was something feasible they could do because this, on real data, this, this, this doesn't grow too fast. Um, so you, you can then find cliques like this and then whether you want to use them or not, but they're, they're at least probably a good seed to stick into one of these other clustering algorithms. Maybe something trying to optimize modular. All right. Uh, so the let's see. So the last class, um, last lecture class will be next Monday. We're talking about graph sparsification. And then don't forget to send your posters to me. Make sure they have a title, a name. The font's not too small, and the size is two three two, two feet by three feet. Either orientation.